Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth edition of the latest tech trends webinar by Rada Tech Hub. As you can see, uh, this time we'll have our webinar in English because we have with us uh, special, guest, uh, special guests from all around the globe. Uh, I'll present them uh, in a minute. For now, uh, I want to have uh, a little bit of uh, catch up with you. Last time um, I talked with you about uh, uh, the newest initiative launched here in Oradea, Make IT in Oradea, and we have um, uh, exciting announcements for you today. Um, they will uh, launch the Bright Nights series and the first edition of this event uh, that aims at students uh, they have ideas to pitch. Uh, will be in uh, in December, in the 4th of December and uh, the next, uh, their next event will be the Bright Nights second event will be on uh, 10th of December and they will have the third event this year in uh, 15th of December. You will have all this information in, uh, in your inbox uh, when we'll send the newsletter uh, please make sure you also check our Facebook page and uh, all the materials we share with you and our and the website or that uh, make uh, make it in Oradea that row. Um, okay, so uh, let's switch to to our uh, our presentation today. Uh, we'll talk about working remotely, a practical guide by GitLab, an international company, the biggest all remote company in the world. Um, I have with me Zuzana Kovac. Welcome Zuzana to our uh, webinar. Hi, nice to see you. Thank you for the invitation. Well, thank you for, uh, for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you and your colleagues today with us. Um, in the beginning, can you please share with us a few words about yourself, your work, what you do at, at GitLab, probably how you ended up there. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Jujanna Kovac, and um, I was uh, raised in Oradia. And um, I um, started working in recruitment five years ago. Okay. And currently at GitLab, uh, I'm a recruiting sourcer, which means that I'm in charge of finding the best talent on earth for the engineering teams. Nice. Uh, I worked at this company since 2018 August, so two years and a few months. And um, this is my first remote job before I also worked in offices like everybody else. And uh, my main motivation and reason to, to have this presentation is to help people like me who come from Oradia or, or other countries on earth, uh, which are not uh, big developed countries, uh, make them understand that they can also land a job at a company like GitLab. And they can also work remotely. Um, and um, looking forward to introduce you to how we Perfect, work. Perfect, because I think um, if we talked about it one year ago, the subject would not be so uh, interesting. But in today's world, I think everybody is eager to hear how a company can work all full remotely and um, without further ado please please tell us more about how you do it at GitLab. Yes thank you. Um, so is the presentation now visible for uh, the viewers? In one, Not right now but I think in one second it will show on the screen. Yeah I'll let you know when uh, okay. when it's on. Okay perfect. Everybody can see it. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Please, everyone, make sure you go to oradiatechhub.ro slash live where you can uh, watch the presentation and uh, the live video. And also, if you have questions for, uh, for our guests today, please make sure you ask them on Slido on the right side of, uh, of the live video. You'll see a widget uh, with the name Slido on it and you can put their questions. And uh, at, in the middle of uh, this webinar, as uh, we, we do it every time, we'll have a short break when we will have some questions for you. Okay, so 
everything's ha everything happens on odadatechhub.ro slash live. Please go there and watch, um, watch the webinar and uh, interact with us today. Sorry, Jana, please, please continue. Thank you very much for the introduction and the help. Um, yes, so first I said I am grateful that uh, I can be here and reach many, many people from my hometown and tell them the story of how I landed in, at this company, how the last two years went through. And uh, just just to make sure of sense, I do it for um, my, because I want to share with you this information. It's not something um, marketing related or promoted or paid or anything. My reason and goal is to future generations or people who never heard about remote working or GitLab or how, how this home office thing works to help them understand that yes, everyone, even if you're from Oradia or anywhere else, you can be part of this journey. Um, so the first slide um, here, I would like to share with you that we will have two webinars. This one will be more about the, re, uh, the how GitLab works as a remote company and uh, how we are different from an office job and uh, what GitLab uh, as a software is doing. And then the second part will be more about um, recruitment related interviewing processes and so on. So if you have questions related to that, then please um, join the second one as well with us about the details. So here you can see the oremote.info site where you can learn more about the details. The presentation is full of links, able to read about them later. Uh, you will receive the presentation in Oradia Tech Hub's newsletter in your mailbox. So don't worry if you haven't seen a slide or you for, ha, ha, could, cannot click on a, uh, on a URL, then you will be able to do that later. Okay. So... Yes, uh, my name is Rujana Kovac, as I said. Here you will be able to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, here is a link uh, to my LinkedIn profile. Uh, here you can send me a message, connect to me, or um, yeah, or so great. on. And also to my, also to my um, GitLab profile. So yeah, I've told you my motivation earlier. And another very important thing is is that um, working remotely is different at every single company. What I will be telling you is how GitLab looks like today and how we evolved to this um, company. It doesn't mean that every other remote company will be like us, will be like this. So please, please uh, keep in mind that. I have my amazing co-workers here with me today. I'm very grateful for them. Dana Iluk, located in Bucharest, um, she works uh, as a sourcer, just like me, and uh, her job is to find um, uh, co-workers in the finance, legal, and marketing teams. So if you have questions about these departments or you would like to apply uh, to a role, then please um, ask her about this. Here you can see as well her LinkedIn and Git, uh, GitLab profile. A bit of personal info, just so you know who we are. Uh, she has a beautiful dog. She loves fashion, psychology, and photography. And I also love her dog because I can we can see each other's uh, pets often in the videos. Uh, then we have with us Joanna Michniewicz. Uh, she is located in Poland. She's also a technical sourcer. Her uh, duties are to find amazing engineers uh, uh, for the support and infrastructure team. She, she, she loves sarcastic humor, traveling, yoga, adrenaline, and she has two beautiful furry big cats. Then we have with us Andrei Stoichescu. He's located in Cluj, and uh, he will help you uh, to have a better understanding of the front-end technologies, engineering department, and so on. And uh, Andrei currently is in Tenerife, nice. in the sun. Enjoy your time. Well. So they are quiet now, but they are here with us the whole time. At the end of the presentation, we will have a questions and answers session. And there, if you have a direct question to them or um, I cannot answer a question, then they will be perfect, here to support perfect. I just me. want to clarify uh, to all our viewers 
that they can ask questions during the presentation and we will address them at the end. So uh, if you have a question uh, for Jujana or for uh, one of, the, of, of her colleagues, please ask them on Slido on oradatechhub.ro slash live um, and we will address it at the end. Okay. Yes, thank you. So a quick introduction really shortly about what is GitLab as a software as a service company. I will not go into details just on a high level. So this is a complete DevOps uh, platform, uh, which is helping the engineering teams to develop the code from the early stages to the last ones. So it, it involves both development and security and operations of, of building the code. And um, here, uh, this is a public website. You can okay. access it. There's nothing secret. Uh, here you can see all the stages of, of how a code is actually created and you can see what GitLab is supporting and helping with the teams. And as you can see, our competitors and other companies can also, but then you have to switch between them and do a bit in this, a bit in that, a bit in that, and then you lose a lot of time and you have to switch tabs and so on. So our solution is created for engineering teams to work together faster and easier and have all the things in one platform. So quickly in, in a short, if you have questions, uh, I will answer them at the end. Then um, what is GitLab as a company? We, we are a, a, an all remote uh, first, so first all remote company, which means that we never wow. even in the past had offices. So it's not something that we switched to throughout the years. It's something that was created from the early beginning with intention to be remote. And um, you can see on this uh, link. Yeah, I think people will, uh, will, uh, can access it afterwards when they will receive yes. uh, the presentation. Yes, of course. I zoom in and show you how amazing this map is we can show you how spread across the globe we are that we are 1200 people in six countries at this moment and hopefully in even more countries with even more co-workers you can see who who's uh, awake and who's at night you can zoom in and check how many co-workers we have in romania or hungary nice. or any other countries and uh, this really proves how um, how working remotely can help anyone to yeah. to a to join a team, team like ours. Nice. <laughs> yes, exactly. And and when we say build their code, and when we say three thousand contributors, that means that people outside of GitLab who are not employees. Uh, they can uh, contribute to our software because we have an open source software. So if if you're a developer and you find something uh, which doesn't work or doesn't look good, then you, you can feel free and add a comment or, or a code line in an issue and send it to our teams. And we might implement that in, in our um, uh, code. Nice. Then I would like to start to talk about working remotely and how it is a bit different than working from an office. So you have to understand that when you switch from, from an office job where they have their own rituals, um, work ways, nine to five working hours, the office physically closed at a certain time and so on and so on, yeah. you will find yourself in a completely different environment. So this means that you have to leave your prior workplace baggage, things you've got used to in the past. For example, like that on a Saturday, no one goes in the office, but while if you work remotely, you can freely choose when you want to work and, uh, and to unlearn the past uh, things and to learn the new ones. Um, so sometimes it might feel a bit weird and unusual and counterintuitive, because it's so different than what you've got used to. So, for example, in my case, I I went through the interviewing process without me face to face any human beings. I only met through video calls with them. I signed my contract virtually, 
and I received my laptop from from a delivery guy at my door. Mm-hmm. It was so weird and so unusual. Um, and you need time to to adapt. And and sometimes it might feel a trap because you you my my parents were extremely cautious. Like, how do you dare to sign a contract and start? working for them you haven't even seen them what if they are not a real company and so on and so on so you have to be precautious and have to pay attention but um this is this is how how the future will look like and more and more companies will go and and switch to remote and um so rewiring takes time again at the beginning it was so weird because i was alone in my room I had my one meeting, it was over, it was all quiet. I wasn't even sure, is it, is, is everyone working? Is, is it okay like this? Is it supposed to feel like this? And it took me months until I got used to how it works, how we communicate in written format most of the times. So you don't really chit-chat verbally with people. You, you read a lot and um, you will learn it and adapt to it with time. And uh, reinforcement is okay. We, when I say this, I say that we we don't judge. We always help each other. So there is nothing to be ashamed of at GitLab. Nothing to um, be shy of. You you can feel free to ask. Uh, we are a culture of uh, collaboration. This is one of our values. This means that if if you feel something is not right or not working as it should you can open an issue and share in and then the, the the wider team will see it and then decide if it's a good idea and then they will change it so it's it's a dynamic uh, uh, environment change how things uh, work out and happen for this change the example is the handbook this is a public um, page again accessible for anyone this document consists of 8400 pages this basically describes what GitLab is and how we work everything about us is in here transparent visible for anyone so you can see here read about the company engineering team marketing sales everything about us and if if i as a as a GitLab team member want to change something, I will go to this handbook page and open an issue. Like when I wanted to, to uh, create this uh, webinar presentation, I created an issue in our um, GitLab on my profile. And I told my team that, hey, I'm going to do this. And I invited other people to join. And, and then this is again visible for everyone. And you, if you're not a GitLabber, you can also contribute to this. You, you have a GitLab profile, you open an issue, and you send your improvement idea. It doesn't necessarily has to be a code. It can be also uh, anything else. And, um, and we all can edit it, and, and you can read all the details about us here. So if you have a question about hiring in Romania, or, or um, what kind of skills do I need if I want to be uh, an engineering um, to join GitLab as an engineer, you will find those here. So everything I know about GitLab, I know it because of the handbook. Then um, this is a report which was created by GitLab. Um, oh, sorry. Um, they asked uh, 3,000 people, I think, about their opinion about okay. working remotely. I'm not going to read all this document for you. You can access it. Um, so this, this is a remote, this is a report about working remotely. You can, uh, download it and read it and go through all the, all the details. So if you have, um, if you just switch to remote or you don't know how it looks like, or you want to improve your team, how, how you work together, then I believe this, this could be a good starting point for you but as well as the handbook is also very useful information for anyone. Then um, I will talk a bit, I will pick a few things that I feel are important to mention quickly on, on this webinar about working remotely. Um, 
these are simple. These things seem to be very simple and basic. And I'm I'm not gonna invent the Spanish wax here, but if you implement them and actually use them, then you will realize they are actually very very important and useful. So one thing is that um, we try to not to rely on synchronicity. So you cannot expect a person who lives in New Zealand and is sleeping at the moment to reply to you on Slack. You cannot expect people from different parts of the world to join a meeting and one of them to be awake at 3 a.m. So we try our best to, to communicate with each other asynchronously. That's why we open issues. So you, if you have something to discuss about, you go, go to profile, open an issue, add the people you want to talk about, or open a Slack group. And, uh, and that's how, in a written format, asynchronously, when everyone has the time and, and that's the priority of their day, then they will reply to you and you will work together. Um, then this is related to uh, the previous one that we do not default to a meeting. This means that we do not set up meetings for everything. We only set up meeting if we feel that is the best way to have a conversation about something and um, and if we do it then we do it well which means that every meeting which is again a very simple thing it's been added to the calendar invite but at the moment you can add your points you can add your questions and you can also see other people's questions so I never ever went to a meeting at GitLab unprepared. While before at other companies, I knew what my manager wants or what the hiring managers want. I was always a bit worried. What if I won't be able to answer? Because I don't have enough data. But now you you can prepare beforehand the meeting and just add your numbers or data or anything. And another important thing that we do is that we record all our meetings. So in case a person cannot join in time or they have an internet connection problem and the line drops or the child is crying or anything happens, then you can watch later the meeting and you never miss anything. Or if it's in a wrong time and you are sleeping or it's after working hours, then you will still be able to watch what happens before and and also we do share on our YouTube channel lots of video uh, lots of meetings so if you're an uh, you, if you're not hired by GitLab you can still learn about um, certain departments by going to our YouTube channel and learning about what they talk about on the UX research meeting or the back-end engineering meeting or so on no, it's Am I really, talking? It's okay, it's in the paces, okay. No. Okay. Good. Then um, we also emphasize the importance of links. So, if you have, if I ask a question, then I'm happy that when I get the answer, it's not someone's subjective opinion or how they remember the answer. They actually go to the handbook or to that place where this is written and it's correct, and they see the link. So this way we cannot mix because I remembered wrongly what happened the last week. I'll just search the link for that information and send it to my coworker. Who is it? Already yes, slido time. Yes, Are we in time? Really Everything okay? Time. <laughs> uh. Great. So now we'll have a little bit of questions. And I would only like to say that please note that if you have hiring related questions, we will have another webinar where we will in detail about that. Uh, just mm. information. Okay, perfect. Um, Over to so you. To, every, to everybody who's watching us live. Please make sure you are uh, on the oriltechhub.ro slash live page. And uh, on the right side, you'll notice the slider widget. Uh, when we, uh, where you have a section called pause. And uh, in a couple of seconds, you'll see there um, the 
first question. Yeah, actually, I, I can see the first question. Um, so the question is, do you use any Git version control systems? Um, I'll answer it. So, yeah, I think everybody can see the live results. Perfect. Uh, people are voting. Most of them uh, use GitLab, so uh, most of the people that watch us seem to be familiar with GitLab. Maybe everyone watching <laughs> us is a coworker. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, So we have 16 people uh, that answered the question, 17. Uh, we'll, we'll wait a bit more. Okay, so uh, more than 50% uh, use GitLab and um, the, next, uh, the next answer is they don't use any. 24% don't use any Git version control system. Okay. It's perfect. I think, uh, I know, Jana, do you have something to add to this? Or should we move to the next mm. question? Mm, I don't have anything to add. We okay. can move to the next, perfect. thank you. Let's see the next question. Okay, so let's see how many people work remotely at this point. Well, I'm thinking if I'm working remote, remote, if I don't have an office, I have my questions, I have my answer. Okay. So, most of the people that are watching us today uh, work remotely and uh, that I think this is also part of the bigger context that we have with this coronavirus situation. Uh, most of the people in the tech community work for, uh, from home. Most of the companies, they have at least they let people work from home and we can see it in the responses that uh, we got so 85 percent out of 20 that means like 17 i think 17 18 people work remotely great let's move to the next question Okay, so let's see the motivation uh, behind you joining our webinar today. So, why did you join the webinar? You're interested in working remotely? You're interested in GitLab in general? Or by accident? Okay, let's see. I'm pushing by accident because I am here by accident. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was invited but by accident because by accident I went to the co-working office and met you <laughs> the team yeah well I think if we go to to the root of everything everything seems to happen by accident but yeah, yeah. it's in the small things that add up okay um, Let's see. We now have 20 people that answered the question. Most of them are interested in GitLab. So, uh, uh, okay. Actually, it's equal. We have interested in uh, more people interested in working remotely. 55% are interested in working uh, remotely and they want to learn how 
they can do it and uh, probably how they can improve the whole process. Uh, I think we have two more questions. Okay. Next one is, if you work remotely, uh, where do you love to work from? Co-working offices, as we have here at Onada Tech Hub, or uh, coffee shops. Uh, this is an interesting uh, answer. Uh, home, from home, or you don't work remotely. Uh, if you're not a barista in Romania, you should not be able to work from a coffee shop. <laughs> it's forbidden yes. by law, at least uh, for now. We hope the situation will turn out better. Okay. So we have 17 people that answered the question and the number, number is Okay, it's getting bigger. Most of the people work from home. Uh, what about you, Chijana? I prefer co-working offices and anywhere else but my, okay. my room and my home because uh, I will talk about this in my presentation later. Um, I, I, I love to be around other people and, and I hate to be alone yeah. so Yes, the, the co-working offices are, are a very good option and also coffee yeah, shops. Perfect. When, you, when you have the chance to visit Oralia again, you're more than, welcome, more than welcome to join us. You know that yeah. already. I, um, yeah. I think it, it also have, uh, has to do with uh, the coronavirus situation that most of the people work from home right now. So, uh, 73%. Yeah. That's... Um, 16 people, I guess, uh, work from home. And then uh, the rest, most of them from co-working offices or renting an office. Okay, so we have one more question for you today. And then I'll invite you to ask us question, uh, especially Jujana and uh, her colleagues. Uh, so which tool or method do you use for time management? So we have here uh, a few a few tools uh, listed, and you also have an option. Uh, the tool is not listed here, and uh, we invite you to share it with us. Uh, you can write us at info at or at up that raw or uh, on Facebook or on Instagram and send us a message with a tool that you use and we will include it in the presentation that will be sent through our newsletter. Um, okay. Um, yes, please, please share with me whatever you use because I'm very interested in uh, what people find useful for their time management. And this way we can interact a bit with each other and you can also teach me okay, something. Okay, so I'm very su surprised by the answers, uh, most of the people considered them too cool to use uh, any any kind of tools. Uh, well, that's good. We have a lot of cool guys and gals that joined us today uh, on one part. And on the other part, uh, I think uh, it's very interesting for your employers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well... I think, uh, Jijana, you, you will touch on more on this subject later about tools that you have people, other, others' opinions and what they find useful. Awesome. Okay. Okay. I think, uh, uh, yeah, most of the people don't use the tool yet. Uh, so I don't know. You tell us some uh, some tools that we can use for time management, or at least uh, why we should use, because I think we should use something for. Uh, I absolutely. Th yeah, I think uh, we have some uh, technical issues with the live video, but uh, we just got back, or are in the process of getting back. Okay, so. Um, we should be live again. 
Perfect. Um, so, Shijana, can us. you see my screen? Uh, one moment. I think people can see your screen. Yes. Uh, in, in in a few seconds. Just a few seconds. And uh, so we can see the Shijana's. Yeah. Okay. Please. Awesome. So let's move to the next part of the presentation, which will be um, about other tips and tricks and ways we manage to, to make this remote work even to feel more connected to each other and to, to bear with the uh, difficulties you might have if you were... Yeah, that's uh, very important. Yes. So at GitLab, we have lots of initiatives as we, we are remote for years since the beginning, I think 2014. Uh, we, we managed to learn what is needed and what is important and, and we are constantly adding new things and trying them and see if, if they work out and if they are useful for the team. Okay. So here I listed a few things. Um, one of them is um, the coffee chat, which I really, really love. This means that, um, so normally if you're in the office, you can by accident at the coffee machine. You don't have this opportunity at GitLab. Yeah. You will never ever by accident meet with someone. Um, so for this, we have a robot on Slack, which pairs you up with a random coworker, and then you have their name popping up, and you can just start a conversation with them, set up a short 30-minute coffee chat to know them, to talk with them, to learn about their background, and so on. Nice. Then we have mindfulness calls uh these were introduced this year because they were very much needed because the world changed uh this is a short 15 minute um meditation mindfulness call this is usually guided by a coworker, and uh in these 15 minutes we we, we turn off and switch off from work mode and we switch to uh, a relax relaxation mode so you need that time to, to detach a bit from the work. And um, we also have Ask Me Anything sessions. These are also popping up in your calendar and you will see uh, this, uh, Sid is talking about something. Sid is our CEO. Okay. And um, if you want, you can drop your questions. So this is again, something very nice and interesting that I feel much more connected to each coworker at GitLab than I felt before because here I have the chance to to ask directly questions from them or send them a message on Slack. While at other companies, you couldn't just have a conversation with the CEO just like that, or they didn't have these ask me anything sessions. So this is again one of our values, which is the transparency. Nice. I'm very curious about the next one. Global pizza parties. How do you do that? Uh, Joanna, can you help me please with the global pizza party? Sure. Um, hi everyone. Hi. Joanna, I was introduced earlier in the in a presentation. Um, part. So uh, pizza parties. Um, when it comes to pizza parties, it depends because every now and then we have. Um, like, um, you know, allowance that we can actually uh, globally, um, everyone buys a meal and then we get uh, reimbursed for that from GitLab. And then sometimes, you know, it depends um, what you want to, or like who you want to connect with, because we have also a lot of different Slack channels that are like theme based. Okay. So for example, I myself am in a few, few channels like CAT or <laughs> Um, all caps or any other ones or like vet lab which means that you know most of the people there um, like try to eat uh, you know um, vegetarian or, or vegan and then that's how you you know connect with people uh, and organize something that maybe works um, best uh, time wise for most of the folks um, then you just order a pizza uh, give up reimburse you for that and then you connect with folks for 30 minutes so. Nice. so you so you do it live you turn on your cameras and have a zoom or something like that and yes uh, yes eat pizza and share stories and have fun together online yes exactly okay, very everyone interesting. 
their pizza uh, and talks about the toppings they got. And also you can see pets all over, you know, trying to take a sneak peek and see a little bit of salami or something. Oh, nice. Uh, it's the first time I, I ever heard uh, about this concept. Uh, well, very, very, very innovative. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna, Thank for sharing you. it with us. Um, okay. Then I will not go into details with all of them, but for example, the talent shows are for children. So if you have a child who would like to present something, then we set up a meeting and then more cute little children are there and showing. And I actually know most of my coworkers' children's names. So nice. um, I will talk about being connected, though working remotely in my next slide. Uh, and the contribute events are again, uh, that's that's the big team building at GitLab. That's the time when we meet face to face. That's the time when we all get on a plane, we go somewhere, and then there we meet in person with every single other coworker. I mean, who can join? And uh, th those are amazing events. Wow. So now I would like to talk a bit about my personal experience working at GitLab. This is subjective. This is how I feel. This is what I went through in the past two years. Uh, we are all different. I will just share with you um, from my point of view. So um, you, you manage your own time, which means you need to have discipline because uh, you, the work-life balance can, uh, can uh, change and, and the fine line between work time and personal time can vanish. As it's at, at GitLab, it's not a nine to five job. We don't expect you to turn on the computer at five, nine and quit at five. You have your own freedom to decide if if you want to go running in the morning, like I did in the first picture. I never ever had the energy to, to do sports after eight hours in the office and then commuting home and then get your workout clothes and, and no, it never worked out. But since then I've started to work for GitLab, I had way much, much more energy and I could decide if I want to start to work a bit later and go for a run in the morning or so on and so on. Uh, then another important thing is, is the co-working office reimbursement. I'm a very, very extroverted person. I, I need to, to have other human beings around me. My family was worried about me working from home because I, it will drive me crazy what will happen to you. But it, it doesn't mean that you are closed in your house or in, in a co-working office and you cannot exit and you just have to stay there all day long. It means you can choose where you want to work. You can work from home, from your parents' house, from a co-working, from a seaside or from Tenerife like Andre mm -hmm. or so on. Uh, so uh, you, you can... Um, you can you, you will be connected with others you don't have to be alone and you don't have to be isolated and uh, in these times it might feel we are isolated from each other because we can't go to a coffee shop or or to a restaurant or so on but uh, I always felt that at GitLab I'm never alone. There is always someone awake on some part of the world from these 68 countries. There is always someone I can reach out to. My, they might not be here physically, but they are here to, for a phone call or for, for any kind of help. They are here as emotional support in my webinar, uh, yeah. helping me if I have a question and so on. Um, and then another thing I really, really uh, emphasize that it's important is that we have to learn to detach from our computer because it's very easy to to read an email at 9 p.m. to to start working on a Sunday. So people need, need to, to to turn off a bit and and uh, and detach from from the machines. Then uh, another thing I love about GitLab that uh, I can learn about other cultures, how other people live. I had a conversation with a coworker from Kenya, another from a coworker from Nicaragua, from New, from Zealand. New Zealand. I, I in normal, normal situations, I don't think I would have ever met a person from Africa or New Zealand. But thanks to this company and to the robot which connects me to random people, I can I can learn about how they live on the other part of the world. And uh, surprisingly, we are not that different. <laughs> then um, we have that um, 
you can sign up to coaching sessions and the person will help you if you have uh, professional difficulties or personal or so on. Um, these are also uh, some, some part of it is um, uh, financed by GitLab. We can sign up to lots and lots of trainings. Uh, we, have a, we, we had a visiting grant. We don't have it anymore because of the um, uh, current world situation. But that meant that if you traveled to another country and you had a coworker there, you could send them a message saying, hey, I'm here in Bucharest. Do you want to drink a coffee with me or something? And uh, then the company reimbursed your uh, traveling costs. Uh, and the most important, I don't even know which is the most important, <laughs> uh, the, the, we, have every, we had every nine months a uh, contribute event, which, yeah. which uh, you can see the pictures here. Um, on the top right, that's um, training, that's a sourcing conference. Then um, the one with the masks and the one on the right are our New Orleans uh, contribute events. And uh, on the bottom, you can see uh, in South Africa, in Cape Town, our nice. company gathering. So these are events where you meet with everyone face to face. Everyone gets on a flight, goes to that country and meets other co-workers and I think this is this is a very good initiative and I, I would if it were not for GitLab um, and then I, I don't know I think maybe this is the most important that we are free in all aspects so you are free to choose when you work you are free to choose how you set up your uh, work time balance your your when in what kind of batches you work like you work a lot here but less there and so on you're free to change a process okay. you're free to step up for yourself and to tell your co-workers hey this process doesn't look good let's change it you open an issue so and of course the physical aspect of freedom which we don't have again that you can travel and uh work from anywhere where you have internet and, and uh, electricity. So again, um, here you can access more details about our uh, remote, how we work remotely. We also have a co-worker called Darren here um, in He is the head of remote. He, he knows everything about this. So if you have a specific question, feel free to reach out to him. And um, quickly, uh, the table of content for the next webinar that yeah. will be more about the hiring process at GitLab. Um, again, nothing confidential, nothing new under the sun, things from the handbook, how we hire, how the interview process looks like, the contracts, benefits, the contribute event. Uh, could you work for GitLab in the sense that what kind of technologies we are looking for uh, on candidates' profiles, the values we we are very much emphasizing that we look and hire more for the values. So if if we fit um, according to our values, then you will enjoy your time at GitLab. So the recruiters uh, also check those when they talk with a candidate. And um, just for your information, if you're totally new to GitLab, you don't know what's an issue, what's a merge request, and this whole thing then you can learn it here. This is a training from uh, from the ground, from uh, the beginning. You will learn here. You will find all the explanations and there is a test at the end. But it's just for yourself, a quiz to, and I think then you can share it on your LinkedIn profile. So oh, okay. for, for your information, if you would like to learn, then you can access these trainings. And this was the presentation. Thank you very much for your time and patience. And if you have questions, feel free to ask them now. And in case you don't remember a question now, or you're watching this recording later, then feel free to send uh, an email to, to my email address, and I will come back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Jana, for your presentation and for uh, sharing with us uh, your experience uh, working in a on radatechhub.ro slash live where everybody can ask ask questions everybody that watches live this interview um, we have some questions but if there are more questions uh, please make sure you go to radatechhub.ro slash live uh, 
uh, in the right side on the right side you can see the slide or widget where you can put uh, like where you can ask us questions so we have a question from Amalia she asked have you felt it yes yes we can see it right now uh, answering to Amalia's question yes I absolutely feel it and uh... GitLab was set up from the early beginnings with these very, very fu fundamental and important values. These are collaboration, results, efficiency, uh, diversity, iteration, and transparency. And these are taken absolutely seriously. So without these, we wouldn't be here today. If, okay. if we don't collaborate in the issues and share with each other what we've learned and work together, it wouldn't work. If we wouldn't measure the results and the efficiency, again, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. So, because we don't have set work hours, you can work two hours a day and then do nothing else. And then what do you do with those people? Well, you measure their results and efficiency and then you check their numbers. And so everyone can uh, manage their time according to how they want as long as they bring the results and are efficient. Okay, because... So uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, I was thinking. I was thinking about this. How do you measure uh, your work and the work that uh, everybody is putting in in a company? You measure it uh, by hour, as many companies do. How many hours people spend on working or pretending working, <laughs> or uh, do you have other KPIs per project? that are different from the number of hours that are. Yes, so I, Joanna, anyone else, if you can help me with the KPIs or some other links. So, uh, no, we do not measure the worked hours because we know that people can sit in front of a computer, turn it on and do something totally different. So yeah. this is not how, how we operate. And, uh, measure we have every single team and every single individual has an OKR um, it's it's black and white and there what's, tell, what's that what's the OKR uh, I, so it de depends if I'm a sourcer my my role is to bring uh, um, profiles for the uh, open requisitions okay. and I talk with my my team and my manager and we set a number like hey a month we would like you to bring this many people okay. and they don't care if I worked if I didn't work if I worked seven hours instead of eight as long as I have my numbers and then okay. it depends it's different for the engineering team I don't know how the engineers are measured but every single um, department uh, has their own KPIs. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Everyone has their own KPIs. They are clear and understood and told by their managers. You you don't have to to make magic and do something that you can't do. These are rational, uh, achievable things we expect from each other, and uh, this is how the the results and efficiency uh, values are met. And again, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. If we don't have this value, again, we have nothing to talk about. We are people from all different types of backgrounds all across the globe. This is something yeah. we, we have to. I mean, it's you need a constitution. <laughs> so, uh, yes. yeah, that is your constitution. Yeah. Yes, and uh, iteration and transparency, I think these are obvious. I don't have to um, go into yeah. details. We've seen how uh, transparent we are so far. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was going to say you look very much uh, as an open company. Well, it's also the setup of your business uh, and what you do, but you're very open as a company because uh, you also have having uh, uh, you also have these uh, other people, three thousand people that are involved in your projects without being uh, employees of your companies of your company. So. You're a very open company with a lot of uh, resources that are shared to the public and uh, with a lot of channels that people can uh, use to get to inside the company, to people, to resources, to insights. Uh, this is my yes. personal observation. I'm glad to hear that. 
Amalia, if I didn't answer your question, please uh, reach out to me, send me an email, and we can go more into the details. Or if you have anything else to discuss with me, then uh, quickly I would like to go through the other questions. Yeah, sure. When GitLab hires you, what type of contract will you have? Will you be a contractor or an employee? Health insurance will still be included in the contract. It depends on which in which country you are uh, living at that mo uh, point. Okay. Um, you can, I saw uh, one of my coworkers added the link to our contract. If you scroll down, uh, Christoph, in the comment section, you will see the contracts. So in some countries, we have entities where you will be hired as a GitLab employee. In some countries, you will be hired as a contractor. And um, uh, you will see the details about the health insurance uh, there in the con contract se uh, section in the handbook. What benefits do you get salary at GitLab or usually at remote opportunities? Uh, I can talk about GitLab, not the usual other remote opportunities. I don't know them. I know that um, we, we have tons and tons of benefits. Again, it's linked in the conversation below. Please, please click on the link. Uh, we have um, like co-working reimbursement, just quickly a few I can uh, uh, tell. We co-working reimbursements, then we have uh, the office supplies. So if you need a table, a monitor, a mouse, anything that, that you would usually need in an office, you, you will order it for yourself and then GitLab will reimburse to you. Um, we have... Um, we have so many. We have the training reimbursements. So if you want to learn a bit more about um, uh, engineering and you're an engineer, you can um, ask your manager, hey, I've seen this course. It's $200. Can I sign up? And they will approve it or not. But probably they will. Um, you can send flowers uh, if if some something amazing and beautiful in one's lives or or something sad then uh, you can reach out to the custom experience team and uh, they will help you um, nice. set, set it up and order it. And uh, we have lots yeah. of benefits. You mentioned Christoph, about uh, uh, check uh, them. to different, uh, having those uh, events as a team. Yes. That's yeah. the tribute event, which is once a year. And um, the company reimburses your flight ticket and uh, the company pays the uh, the accommodation and the food uh, costs, and uh, you will you will travel there and be there for a week. Usually, I think it was seven days, but you can stay in this in that city if you want, and um, and that's also a, a huge benefit, I would say. Where can we find other remote opportunities? Um, there are several websites nowadays. Uh, they are. If you Google them, uh, you will you will see the details. But I would uh, emphasize and pay attention to to contracts and uh, and details because now that everyone has to work from home, you might be working remotely. The office will reopen, and then that's not actually a remote yeah. job. It's just remote for a few months. Then you have to pay attention to the time zone because the company might be on on another continent and then you have to work at night on. Um, but um, as you can see, there are many companies who are pretty um, uh, pretty helpful in regards to um, the, the contracts and the working yeah. hours and uh, so uh, on. Do we have any other questions? We also yeah. have options, yes. So... I don't see other new questions in the sidebar, yeah. in the chat. Please, if you have anything else in your mind later, yeah. feel free to reach out to me. And also, please keep in mind that in the handbook, we have, have everything about us. And, and in case you, you don't... It's perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jujana. Um, as as you mentioned it and i mentioned it uh, this conversation is recorded everybody can access it um, and also get in touch with you if they want to 
if they have any questions. Um, I don't know if there's uh, anything else from you or uh, your colleagues that you want to share with us today. I don't have anything. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, if there's not... Okay, we'll have uh, another... Uh, the, next, uh, the next webinar. Uh, we'll meet again with you. Uh, Jana, I don't know if uh, we'll meet again with your colleagues, but uh, it's it's been a pleasure to have you all in uh, in this uh, in today's webinar. Thank you for being part uh, and contributing to our community. I think there are, there were been a lot of uh, things, new things that we we learned today, and things that we can uh, uh, go further and uh, find more question uh, more uh, things about. Um, thank you again for joining us today, Jijana, and uh, thank you, uh, thank you for bringing your colleagues with us. Um, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting, and uh, have a beautiful day. And looking forward thank to you. the next. Thank you. So the next webinar. webinar would be on the 9th of December. Uh, we'll talk about uh, more about yes. hiring. Um, in, uh, in this context of uh, remote teams. Uh, until then, please make sure you subscribe to our newsletter so you'll receive our pres uh, the presentation and all the links and all the details that have been shared with, uh, with us today. And also like our page on Instagram, on, uh, follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook and subscribe to our, our uh, YouTube channel where you can watch uh, this recording and other uh, webinars that we have recorded previously. Thank you, thank you again, uh, Jijana. Thank you to your company that allowed uh, you to have to be with, with us today. Uh, we want to thank our partners for facilitating uh, this webinar series. And last but not least, thank you all that watched uh, this webinar. We hope you find it uh, valuable and helpful. Uh, be safe and have a wonderful evening.